several years ago, I left my job and I went out on my own to try to start a a business. Really, I, I didn't wouldn't probably have called it that. I was just trying to make a living, but I started a business, speaking and coaching and writing. And uh, the next thing you know, this thing starts to grow. It was it was crazy what happened. The very first year, I it was it was bigger than anything I could have even imagined. The second year, I doubled what I was able to do in the first, actually nine months of the first year, I was able to double that the second year. And uh, I knew I was going to be in trouble because I needed help. And so I started asking myself this question, if you got a business that starts growing, uh, like what would the next level be? And so I got a buddy of mine to come help me. We actually doubled that in year three, and then we just kept growing, growing, growing. And so I now everybody's asking me this question. I get it all the time. How do you scale your business? It's a question I'm still asking myself, but I think I can help you. I know you're there today. You're like, you're trying to take your business to the next level. It doesn't matter if you've got a content business like mine, if you have a, a franchise business, if you have a, a massive company you're leading, billion of dollars, or you're just at a really small little level with a jewelry business on an Etsy store. It really doesn't matter. I can tell you, if you want to scale your business, there's three secrets. I'm going to share them with you in this video. So I, I want us to get started here. So I want, us to, I want you to think about like scaling something, trying to take it from where it is to exponential growth, where it could just grow on and on. How would you do that? It, it's, this is really not that hard. We make it way harder than it has to be, but I got some I got some things I think that'll help you. So I got a little diagram that'll pop up as, as you watch this, but there's really three questions that you need to ask yourself. These three questions, they have some intersecting points as, as you'll see, but these three questions are the key. And then I'm going to give you a few things at the end, uh, some things to remember as you think about scaling your business. So let's, let's dive into this. So the first question I have for you is, is what is it that you're trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? That is your first question. You have to define that. Like if you're trying to, to build a company, if you're trying to build multiple locations, if you're trying to start franchises, if you're trying to, like, what are you trying to do? You have to start with a definition of what it is you're trying to scale. Like what is it, What what's your business is, is, is really the question. And then you can lock that in. That you, You've got to do that if you're going to be able to scale anything. You've got to have crystal clear definition of what you're trying to do. That's the first question. Here's the second one. Who do you need to help you? If you're, if you're thinking scale, it's bigger than what you can do on your own. And that, that really is what happened to me. I, I, was, I was doing really good by myself. I mean, I was doing really well by myself. Things were, 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 were rolling. I mean, it was, it was great. But I thought, I want to have more influence on what I'm able to do by myself. So I'm going to need some help. And so when you begin to think about scaling something, it's not enough for you to just like, I'm, I'm going to do this. Like you got to have some people to help you. So who do you need to help you? The first thing, what are you trying to do? The second question, who do you need to help you? And 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 really, there's only one more question. The que the third question is this: How much does it cost? Like how much does it cost for you to produce what it is you're trying to produce? But more specifically, how much does it cost to have that team that you need to help you? So let's think about if you have like five locations. I can tell you what you're going to need unless you want to be in five locations at one time. And I don't know anybody can do that. You're going to need five leaders. You're going to need five people that are going to be able to manage or lead or, or make sure that they're there present in those places where you can't be all the time. And so it's going to cost you something to have those people because you don't want to just have acceptable people in those locations. You want to have exceptional people. So when you begin to think about the people that you have helping you, you're going to, you want to have the best people you can. You want to, if you're going to produce stuff at a high level, you got to have a high level people to do that. And they're going to cost you something to have uh, exceptional people, remarkable people, the kind of people that you want to represent your name and your business. So, so uh, what does it cost for that? So as you think about this, this that's really all scale is. It's like, what am I trying to do? Who do I need to help me? And what does it cost to be in business, to pay for those people, to pay for the production of the product? Those are the kind of things. But there's some overlap here that I want to look at. And then I'm going to share some, some things with it that you really need to be thinking about if you're going to, uh, to scale whatever it is you're trying to scale. So the, the, the first one is, I want to, where these, where these circles intersect, they're in the, in the very middle, there is, there is one most important thing, and that is you, the leader. You got to have a leader. You got to have a visionary that keeps things together, that keeps things on track, that remembers like what it is we're trying to do, that keeps the vision 
red hot in front of that team that you have and to make sure that that money's being allocated correctly, the budget's, you know, on track, the production, all that kind of stuff. You've got to be the person who oversees everything. So that person in the middle really is the key to scaling anything. You look at any business that is scaling, there is always a leader somewhere in that business that that is the mastermind behind what it is you're trying to do. Probably he or she has a team of people that are, is helping innovate and and they're collaborating on, on the work, but it really does start with you as you think about it. So I want to just remind you that you've got to lead. If you're going to scale something, it has to have a leader. It has to have a visionary. It has to have somebody that keeps it on track. And that really is you. But let's think about where the, some of these other circles intersect. So when you think about what you're trying to do and who you need to help you, that's really the passion circle. I mean, in, in, in the midst of those two circles, like, like what am I trying to do and who do I need to help? I want to have I want it to be loaded with passion in that spot right there. I want it, I want those people that are helping me to be passionate about what it is we're trying to do. You're going to be more passionate probably than anybody about your cause or your thing or whatever you you've got your business, but you got to have people that are locked in. They want to do what you want to do and if you really don't have that, you're going to you're going to struggle. So, it's not just having people that are talented and even even skilled people. And it's great to have talented people, but you want the talented people, you want their skills to be growing. That's not enough. You want to have people that are passionate about what it is that you have. So if you've got widgets, you better have some widget people on your team. If you have a franchise that, you know, a sports thing, you better be, you have sports people with you. If you've got content, they better be passionate about your content. If it's a cause, they need to be passionate about your cause. If it's some kind of retail and whatever it is you're selling, they need to be, they need to be with you on that. They need to be smoking what you're selling, so to speak. And so you want to make sure that you have passion locked in in that you know in that spot like what are we trying to do who do i have to help all of us are like we're, we're in together when, when it's who do i need to help and how much does it cost when those circles intersect that, that's your payroll like what does it cost to have these people and you want to pay for top talent you don't want to just have again acceptable talent you want to have exceptional talent so it's going to cost you something but here's the thing when it comes to your talent or when it comes to highly talented people top talent we call it when you've got top talented people, they're not always looking for more money. Sometimes they're looking for opportunity. So you have an opportunity to attract top people when you've got something that you're doing that they really feel good about. So if you got you got people that are passionate, it actually it it, it will it will it will make money less important to them. Now, on you as the leader, don't don't let that happen. You make sure your people are paid fairly. They're paid market value. Uh, you don't have to overpay. Sometimes you may want to overpay for it, but you really don't. You want to you want to pay the market value. You need to make sure that you're you're paying fairly. If you've got a great cause, you've got passionate people, money really won't be the issue. It, you'll you'll start doing something great together. So, how much does it cost, and who do I need to help? That's your payroll spot. And then, what am I trying to do, and how much does it cost? That's your production number. I mean, it's like like what does it cost to produce? What it is we're doing. If we're doing widgets, what does it cost to make a widget? If we're making sandwiches in a restaurant, what does it cost to make a sandwich? If we're uh, if we're selling content, what does it cost to produce this content? Whatever it is you got, if you got a sports franchise, what does it cost to pay these players? As you begin to think about your 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 uh, your production cost, there's a number there. And so that's another one of those things. So when you think about scaling, it really does come down to what are you trying to do, who do you need to help you, and and how much does it cost? Your passion, your payroll, your production, all those things around this idea of a leader who has a vision to scale things. Now, as we think about scale and you think about scale in your business, let me give you some things that you're going to need to remember. And it, the, the, I mean, these are going to really take you over the top as you think about scale. They, they've really helped us as we've, uh, I, I'll just say we've grown our business. I wouldn't even say we've scaled it. I mean, we're, we're thinking about that. We're trying to do that. We're working toward that. But literally, it is. It, I mean, this is a this is a long march. I read a book of I don't know a few years ago. There was a book written called Scaling Up Excellence. It was an excellent book. I would encourage you to read that if you think about, or, or if you're curious about this idea of <clears throat> of scale. But one of the things they point out in this book is, I remember this. They they talk about how scaling is is like a um, it's like a ground war, not air, not an airstrike. And if I recall the book, it, it it was talking about the bombs that were dropped. I believe during World War II, when bombs were being dropped in in uh, Europe, it, it it said they went back and 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 uh, I think the story goes they were they were tra they were able to go back and track where the bombs were dropped versus the coordinates where they were set. And some of the bombs were dropped that were dropped were landing a couple of miles from their target. I mean, they were they weren't even always close to where they were 
trying to drop these things. And, and the point of this chapter in this book was basically if you're trying to take territory in a business, it, it really is not just you, you get to come in and drop a bomb and hope that, you know, everything is we're going to be able to take that turf that we're trying to. It's actually more like a ground war. And, 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 and all military campaigns, the best military campaigns that, that are victorious, territory has got to be taken with ground forces. And so uh, th this, uh, in, in this book, one of, one of the things uh, that it points out is there's a consultant who, who, who made this statement. I love this. Uh, it, it says that it's better to get 1,000 people to take a single step than one person to take 1,000 steps. As you think about scaling something, what would it look like for you to get every single person to take a single step in unison? Everybody's embracing the right system, or everybody has is, is, is got the same value. I mean, you just, you just take it one step at a time. Everybody locks arms together, and there is alignment on your team. That becomes a really powerful force multiplier. So let me give you some things to think about as you begin to, to, to plan towards scaling and getting everybody on the same page. Here's, here's to me, this is, this is number one on the list. Uh, and I, I would say it this way. Remember that your why trumps your what. Why do you want to scale this? Why do you want to be in business? You, you know, again, you may be a sports team or you may be a, uh, you may be a, a school that's trying to educate kids. But, but at the end of the day, it's not just like, like um, we, we're, we're trying to make sure that kids learn math and science. Why? Why, why? why do we want them to know? We're, we're creating opportunity for kids. And so as teachers, we're trying to scale, you know, a mentality in our school. Or if you've got a business that's trying to scale your profits and, and, and open up another location, like, why do you want to do that? And if you don't really have a compelling why, if it's just more money, more profits, that's a why. But if you don't define that and understand that's why you're doing it, 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 your why is so much more important than what it is you're doing. If you can understand that and you can lock your people in on like, here's why we're doing what we're doing, that's, that's huge. Here's the second one. The best vision, I believe this, the best vision is transformational, not transactional. If you have a vision that is, that is thinking about how do we create environments, how do we create opportunities like we talked about for people to get better, for their lives to change, that's so much better than a trans transaction because what happens when you do that is your people that you're serving, your customers, if you want to think of it that way, they become your your best marketing campaign. If it becomes transformational to them, guess what they do? They tell their friends. And when that happens, it's game over for you. I mean, your business goes crazy at that point. And so word of mouth is the best way to grow your business. I know that's what's happened to us. We, we, we go out and we do an event. We speak at a place. And next thing you know, somebody's loving that. And they're calling us from somebody else was in the audience. They heard it. And, and next thing you know, we're working with another company. And so the best vision is, is transformational, not transactional. That will create all kind of marketing opportunities. Word of mouth, it'll spread. Here's the third thing. Uh, ask not just... Uh, like why you're doing what you're doing. But but here's the question I love when I think about scale. Who's it for? Who's it for? This is a powerful question. When you're asking yourself, who are we doing this for? When I speak, I always think the audience is the hero. This is about them. It's about what they need to hear, not what I need to say. I want to make sure I'm locked in on like, who's listening. What is it for? And for you, your customers, like who are you doing this for? Like what? And that will keep you really locked in. And it actually promotes scale because you realize if you're if you are being transformational, lives are being changed, people are being touched, people are being helped, customers are being served, all of a sudden it is compelling for you to create more opportunity, more locations, more places where people can get what it is you got going on. You got some great stuff going on. You want as many people to be able to experience that, but who's it for? And if you can lock in on your uh, on your customer base, like like what who is who is that average person who who consumes what it is you're producing? If you get that person locked in your mind, and you start creating stuff. Your stuff will get better, and then all of a sudden, the people out there will demand that you get bigger. So it'll help you in your scale if you if you really create great stuff. Start with asking who's it for, and that'll help you do that. A couple more things I would I would say to you here as you think about some of these principles. Uh, the next one is that businesses that last aren't built fast. Businesses that last aren't built fast. If you really want to scale something, you want to take your time. It's not saying it can't scale fast, but but and I'll get to that in just a second. But I want I want to remind you that your culture 
is so important. And so you want to protect your culture and you can't build a culture fast. You've got to build a culture right. Uh, it, and, and, and that starts with you really locking in and defining what it is you're trying to build. So, so when you're, or maybe we should even say it that way, cultures at last aren't built fast. We want to take our time. We want to make sure that we've got everybody locked, armed together, bleeding the same values, marching in step with one another, uh, embracing the same systems and all those, you know, the, the work habits that we have, the behaviors that we want to be there. Uh, we, again, we don't have to be in a hurry to get, we want to get it right, not fast. And, and then uh, I will say this, once you start being successful, it's going to feel like at times your hair's on fire. I mean, you're going to be going fast. It's, and, and it's fun to go fast. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, I'd just say it this way, the faster you scale, the blurrier it gets. The faster you scale, the blurrier it gets. When you're scaling fast, when you're going fast, think about being in a high-performance car, or you're going down the freeway, you're flying in that car. The faster you go, the harder it is to read the signs on the side of the road. It, and as you think about scaling your business, the faster you scale, the harder it is to pay attention to what's going on around you. All of a sudden, things get real blurry. And if they get, if they get blurry... Or even as a leader, if they get fuzzy for you, if you're if you're in the middle of all this and it's fuzzy to you, it's going to be blurry to your people, and you'll forget why we're doing what we're doing. We'll forget even what we're doing. We'll forget who it's for. All those things that we've talked about. It's very important that we understand that the faster things go, we've got to take even more time for ourselves, more time to think, more time to cast vision, more time to have clarifying conversations, create role clarity, all those kind of things more time to evaluate our systems. We've got to have the, all this stuff in place that we want to protect at all costs because we want to make sure that we're executing in this business that we're scaling. We want to make sure we're executing. Everybody's doing the right thing the right way every time. That's the way we define execution. And so we want to make sure that we've got that locked in. And if we're going really fast, it's hard to keep our eye on that. So the, the faster you go, the more you as a leader have to slow down and pull back and say, okay, what are we doing? Making sure you're working on the business, not getting sucked into the business. And so uh, that's another one. And then uh, just a couple more here. Your structure should enable, not inhibit what you're trying to do. I love that that mindset. And, and when I talk about who do you need to help you, you better have the people around you that are helping you go where you want to go. As I think about what I'm trying to do, if it weren't for the people around me, there is no way we could be creating what we're creating, helping who we're helping, coaching who we're coaching, all those things. It's it's the people around you. So your structure's got to be right. And so if you've got a weakness in an area, that's an area you've got to fill first. If you've got a financial weakness, you need a financial person. If you've got an operational weakness, you need a, you need somebody really that's great in ops. If you're great in ops, uh, you you eventually you need to be out of ops or you just need to be the ops person and hire yourself CEO at that point. But, but it your tendency is going to be to lean where you're really good and then try to, uh, you know, like, what do I do over here? Well, if I'm not careful, I'll, I'll put my hands in places where I need to have other experts helping me. If you're trying to scale something, that's not just you again. That's not just you and your little team. That's multiple locations. That's getting bigger, growing, kind of a, a growth mindset. It's got to be a place where you're trusting those people to get that work done. If you've got the passionate people and you're paying them right, you know, all those things we talked about earlier, all of a sudden now you've got the right team and you can do what you can do and then you let everybody else do what they're paid to do. And all of a sudden now you've got something that begins to snowball as it goes. And then the last thing I would leave you with is, is just this alignment idea. Again, alignment is a force multiplier when it comes to scale. When you think about alignment, it multiplies impact. It is it is the picture of a tug of war. When I look at some companies, uh, they're – they think they're scaling, but truthfully, they, they have a tug of war going on inside their own organization. You have leaders pulling one way. You have workers pulling another. When you get everybody on the same side of the rope, I think it's a powerful visual picture. Everybody's pulling in the same direction, not against each other. They're pulling against the competition, toward the goal. You have alignment, and when you have that kind of alignment, it becomes a massive competitive advantage. It is a force multiplier for, for exponential growth. And that's what scale is about. It's about growing a business exponentially. And so alignment is where it is. And you gotta have you gotta have real conversations with those people that you have helping. You gotta make sure that everybody's in the same in the same boat and they're all, you know, we're rowing together. We're not we don't have a few people rocking and a few people rowing. We got everybody. They're rowing together. They're working to, together to go to this place to accomplish what we're trying to do. They're they're really uh they're all thinking transformationally, not, you know, 
we got two or three transactional, two or three transformation. No, everybody is locked in. There's alignment. When you get that kind of alignment going, now you're able to scale. So again, let's review. What am I trying to do? Uh, when I think about scale, I, I'm, I got, I'm trying to get bigger. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying more profits, more locations, those kind of things. What am I trying to do? Here's, here's the business that we're in. Who do I need to help me? It's, it's already I'm asking questions that make it bigger than I'm able to do by myself. So I got to have some help. What does it cost to produce what we're trying to do and to pay for that payroll? And then ultimately, as the leader, I'm the one that's got to be in the middle with the vision. Like, here's, here's what we're trying to do. Here's, you know, here's, here's clarity for every person on the team. Here's how we handle our resources and steward all that. And you get all that going, man, your, your business can go from where it is to a crazy place. We've seen it in our own business. It's been so fun to be a part. I mean, it feels like sometimes you're on a rocket ride when you're watching that happen. So that's that's my hope for you is that you will take these questions, you'll take these principles, and you will be found scaling your business.